In our last episode, we arrived at Cheyenne Mountain and cleared the way for our warhead. Then, we blew a hole in the Vault Zero door using a tactical nuke. After the dust settled, we crawled through the hole to arrive inside Vault Zero. As soon as we get there, General Decker gives us a call. Well done, warrior. You have breached Vault Zero's outer perimeter. From here, you must confront and destroy the calculator. Dagger Squad was deployed earlier to clear the way for you, but expect heavy resistance from the robots. This is a winner-take-all situation. Hold on, brother. Sir, six behemoths and a large number of pacification robots have slipped in our north perimeter. It looks like the calculator is going for broke. Very well, Initiate. Bring up the tank to the north side and sound the alarm. Recall all patrols ASAP. Yes, sir. We have a situation here, brother. You eliminate the calculator and get home. We'll make sure that you have a home to come back to. General Decker, out! Good luck, General. We're officially on our own. Well, not really. We've got Dagger Squad here. Glory Hog, they shout at us. Warning. Outer perimeter breach. Outer perimeter breach. Main power generator now offline. Emergency power engaged. Toilets offline, sections A5, A6, A9. Vault technician notified. Have a nice day. Oh man, we have to explore a vault and we can't take a crap? What kind of sick world is this? We earned a lot of levels at Cheyenne Mountain, and it's not like we're going to have a lot of time to restock at a bunker, so we'll go ahead and level up our squad now. When done, we can walk around and talk with members of Dagger Squad. This guy over here to the left is Tace. He doesn't have anything to say, but he does open barter dialogue with us. So it looks like each of these guys can function as a merchant. And we do have to spend Brotherhood dollars with them. Yeah, it's the end of the world. We're trying to defeat the calculator. But now these guys are concerned with money. Won't even give us a stim pack. Tace here has quite a stack of medical supplies and thrown explosives. In the middle here, crouching down, the guy who called us a glory hog is Paladin Maximus. Well met, warrior. We're gonna mop up any resistance up here and guard your tail. Good luck taking out the calculator. And don't take any unnecessary chances in there. The Wasteland's future rides on your shoulders. We can barter with him as well. He has microfusion cells and 420 2 millimeter EC rounds. Oh man, I'm gonna have to find a way to snag those. Maximus here and his dagger squad were initially going to have a larger role in our assault on Vault Zero. If we arrived at Vault Zero with an incomplete party, Maximus would have offered us one of his squad mates to help us clear the vault. No disrespect, but your squad looks a little light for this mission. Why don't you take one of my squad members? They're all seasoned, battle-tested soldiers that you can trust with your life and your babysitter. However, this was cut from the game, so we have no further interaction with Maximus or Dagger Squad apart from bartering with them. Then, crouching down to the left of Maximus is Cronus. He has an expanded lockpick, some other sundry explosives, ammo, and chems, but then he also has an electronic lockpick Mark II. I didn't know if we were gonna need this or not, so I went ahead and snagged it. Cost me 1300. On the other side of the terminal is Melira. She has more Gauss rifle ammunition, a ton of first aid, and a big book of science. Then, standing to the right is Phoenix. But in his inventory, we find a YK-42B pulse rifle, the same one I bought for Clarice a few episodes ago, an M60 and a bunch of ammunition. Well, at this point in the game, I was running low on money. I spent practically everything I had on all of the power armor back at Bunker Epsilon. I bought and bartered for what I could, but there was still so much these guys had that I wanted to get my hands on. I have a feeling we'll be coming back to speak with members of Dagger Squad in a bit. When done speaking with the soldiers, we can explore this small room. We don't actually see the door that we blasted into Vault Zero. Instead, to the north of us, we find a door leading to an elevator shaft but it appears to not be functional. Nearby, we do see a terminal. Elevator out of order until main power is restored. Notify vault technician immediately. Thank you. 
Looks like this thing doesn't have power. We don't find much else in this large square room, except for the terminal in the very middle of it. When we try to access the terminal, it looks scientific, so at last we can make use of Oxhorn's science skill. You know, that skill we've been building up with big books of science the entire game, and we haven't yet ever used it? That skill. Thank you for activating Vault Zero Information Terminal. It is 75 degrees with 20% humidity. Information download to Pip-Boy Computer Map Directory complete. Have a nice day. Oh, and she turned on power without talking about my cute haircut. How nice. With the information from the terminal, proceed into the Western Security Wing. Attempt to find a path into the cryogenics or power plant wings. All right, so security wing first, then cryogenics or power, whichever one opens to us. Oh, no! We find a horde of robots waiting for us on the other side of this door. Thankfully, my squad was positioned appropriately and we wiped them out, but as soon as they die, Members of Dagger Squad race down the hall screaming, Damn, I spit on you! Scramble, boys! We got an intruder, they shout! These suicidal Brotherhood soldiers just race out into danger! But thankfully, our snipers, armed with Gauss rifles, destroy the robots before they can kill the members of Dagger Squad. We see the survivors walking back. Glory Hog! This guy shouts at us again. You jerk. Well, we got beat up pretty bad there, thankfully. Before we left for Cheyenne Mountain, I brought practically all of my medical supplies with me. So, healing up Alice, who was in the red. We can then move forward to loot the robot wreckages for anything valuable. Many of these guys are carrying armor-piercing 9mm ammunition. But then we find microfusion cells, which barter at a greater price. Heading to Paladin Maximus, remember, we checked his inventory earlier, we now find a Gauss minigun on his inventory. And then moving down to Phoenix, we find a Sunbeam Gatling laser on his inventory. I'm thinking that both of these guys were supposed to die during that encounter, which is why they raced forward to what should have been their death. Then we could have looted their bodies and walked away with the Gauss minigun and the Sunbeam Gatling laser. However, we were just so good that we saved their lives. And now we gotta buy these suckers off of them. I already have one Gauss minigun for Cookie, but man, wouldn't it be nice to have a second. Alice already has a Gatling laser, but since the Gatling laser just uses the energy weapon skill, I have many more characters that can make good use of this weapon. Looting everything from these robots, we realize we don't have enough to buy either of the weapons. So, we'll have to come back. Heading south down the hallway, we arrive at an intersection. To the east, we find power. And just outside, we find a dental box? It's a dental scanner. Activating it. It says, needs key. Oh, I see. It scans teeth as a key to open the door to power. So, it looks like we need to find some teeth. Or something. Then, moving south down the hallway to cryogenics, we find the door locked. But moving west down the hallway to security, we find the door unlocked. Racing deeper in, we can position ourselves to shoot down the hallway. Our snipers are doing good damage to this guy with a Vindicator minigun at the end of the hallway, but they were taking a long time. So bringing Alice forward with her Gatling laser, we can have her leap from the other side of this wall. With this room clear, we can loot the wreckages and bring the valuables back to Dagger Squad. 
Here I was finally able to purchase Phoenix's Sunbeam Gatling Laser, and I gave it to Harold. He has really high energy weapon skill, and his strength is high enough to be able to use it. And he's got amazing luck. Looking forward to seeing the crits that Harold can do with this sucker. Now that's two people with Gatling lasers. I would have given it to Cookie, but her energy weapon skill was way too low, and I just didn't have enough time to try and build it any higher. So instead, she's equipped with the Gauss minigun, which we'll use in an emergency, and a Browning, which is still pretty devastating. Assembling the squad, assault weapons in front, rifles in back, we can move down the hallway to clear the room to the left. But he went down easy. This room is empty. We find a door in the northern wall that leads to an adjoining room. Heading back out to the hallway, we can also explore this room from a big gap in the wall. But this room is also empty. So bringing the squad back to the hallway, we can move down to the end of the hall. The hall turns west. Here we find an alarm console, but it appears to not do anything. I mean, the calculator already knows we're here. It's not like they're holding hostages that they're gonna execute. Science skill does nothing. No other skill has any function with this terminal, and we can't activate it, so we'll just ignore it. Turning the corner and moving west down the hallway, we find... It's a massage tent! But these tanks move slow. They have no long-range weapons, and we destroy it before it can do any damage. Our perception picks up robots patrolling in the rooms to the north. We are standing outside a door, and next to it is a terminal. Activating the terminal, it looks scientific, so using our science skill, we can open it. Heading into the room, we don't find the patrol until we move to the other side of this machinery. Then Cookie shoots at more robots from the room to the west. Heading inside. They can't even stand up to us. With both of these rooms clear, we can head out a southern door to again arrive at the hallway. Heading down the hallway and rounding the corner to the south, we reach another door. Opening the door, we can move the squad inside. We kill two robot guards that were guarding this door. Moving up to the door, our perception picks up two turrets on the other side of the door. But when I tried to open it, I discovered that it was locked. However, Clarice's lockpicking skill was not high enough to pick it, not even after using lockpicks. I then tried to use that fancy electronic lockpick we found on Dagger Squad, but it didn't work. Looks like we're gonna have to figure out another way into that room. For now, we can move south to open a door in the southern wall. Cow. Harold and Alice tearing it up with their Gatling lasers. Man, I love the sound of that. What a battle, and what a mess. We didn't lose any squad mates, but they all got beat up pretty bad. Thankfully, I can use my stack of field medic first aid kits. Here we find so much loot that I spent a great deal of time dragging all of it back to the room where we find Dagger Squad. I then would just throw it on the ground in a big stack right next to the merchant who was holding the minigun. That way when the time is right, I can just stand next to him, loot it all, and even though I'll be a mobile, I can still buy the minigun. At last, I was finally able to afford the sucker. 
This guy won a 96,000 for the Gauss minigun. Thankfully, all of the microfusion cells were really valuable, so I was finally able to afford it. I decided to give it to Alice. Now, both Cookie and Alice, my only two big guns characters, each have Gauss miniguns. Heading back to the squad, we can explore this huge room. It's mostly empty. Far to the northwest, we do find one terminal bathed in red light. It looks scientific, so using our science skill... Thank you for activating Vault Zero Access Terminal. Security locks on hazardous weapon storage bay G03A05 have been removed. All guards have been informed to allow you access. Have a nice day. Oh, this must be that room that had the turrets inside. The locked one that we couldn't pick. So bringing the squad back that way, we can position them outside the door just in case. Then opening the door... Yeah, and it's just like the recording said... The turrets have been disabled. In the back of the room, we find four high-tech lockers. In the first one to the left, EMP rockets, 50 caliber ammunition, EMP shotgun shells, and Gauss rifle ammunition. In the next one, we find a paramedics bag, another field medic first aid kit, some trauma packs, super stim packs, and a bunch of rat away. In the third one, <laughs> we find another Sunbeam Gatling laser as well as a rocket launcher, some plasma grenades, and two laser pistols. Well, I can't say no to a free Gatling laser. I decided to give it to Oxworm, since the power armor he's wearing raises his strength high enough to be able to wield the thing, and since I've already specced him highly into energy weapons, there's really no reason for him not to use it. That's three guys with Gatling lasers. In the final locker is a copy of Dean's Electronics, a big book of science, a first aid manual, and some Mentats. We can give the books to Oxhorn to make use of his comprehension perk. With Armory clear, we can head back into the big battle room and finish exploring. We find our way out in a southern nook of this room. Here we find a door in an eastern wall. Stepping inside, we find a big bubbling pool of radioactive waste. And in the middle of the room, we find a terminal that looks scientific. Gosh, I wonder how any party that doesn't have at least some points into science could get through this dungeon. Now, I haven't specced any points into science, but I have consumed every single big book of science on one character that this game has thrown at me. And Oxhorn has the comprehension perk, getting twice as much benefit from each book that he reads. And his science skill is only at 110%, and even then, sometimes he fails. So... Presumably, it's possible for some people to not be able to finish the game until they go build up their science skill. At any rate, we did eventually get this terminal to open the door. This terminal has unlocked the cryogenics wing. It is our hope that hidden somewhere in this area is a method of entry to the power plant. Proceed with caution, brother. All right, that's it for the security wing. Cryogenics is now unlocked. It looks like accessing this terminal at one time was planned to be a bit more complicated. We would have had to search for or steal terminal login credentials from a scientist because we find the following terminal recording for this terminal. Login name and password accepted. Welcome, Dr. Mycroft. Unlocking security door L16AB23. Access granted to cryogenics lab. Have a nice day but it was eventually cut from the game. Now all we have to do is use our science skill. This door opens back up into the room connecting to the hallway that leads back to the intersection. We can now go down the southern hallway and open the door to cryogenics. Down the hallway, it turns west, and we immediately come under fire from security bots hiding behind barricades. Then scurry bots come out of nowhere. Then we round a corner into Oh God. With the hallway and this room clear, 
We open the southern door. Ah, okay. Let's go back out to the hallway and use that gap on the wall for more space. Then Dylan decides to take out another one all on his own. Good job, Dylan. Continuing down the hallway, we've got one more room to the left to clear. Then crossing the hall to the east, we find... Vault Dwellers! They are still alive! We are in the cryogenic section, which must mean that if these guys are up and about walking around, the calculator and his robots released all the people in cryogenic storage. But then we hear them talk. What is outside our home? I drink out of toilet. You here to play with me? <laughs> you help me, pee pee. Ka, ka. Uh-oh, it's too late for the party. Me hungry. These vault dwellers are infantile. Is this a side effect of the cryogenic process? Or could these possibly be the inbred descendants of the original vault dwellers? After all, we heard the voice of one scientist on the holotape outside Vault Zero in Cheyenne Mountain, and he sounded normal, competent even. And that recording was made a year, maybe two or three years ago. If all of these people were cryogenically frozen, and if this strange infantile behavior is a side effect of being cryogenically frozen, First, why did the survivors of Vault 111, during the events of Fallout 4, not lose their minds like this? Perhaps it was a different cryogenic technology, though these are presumably from the same vault network. Not even the cryogenically frozen humans on Mothership Zeta had this same problem. And second, why did the calculator defrost them to begin with? Heading through a door to the east, we find another room, but it's completely empty. There is a door to the north, but it's locked. So heading back, we find a door in this room to the north. It's open. It leads out to a hallway where we see a robot. Ow. Oh. Heading back out to the western hallway, moving north and entering the room from this wider gap, we find the robot not hostile. And he's standing over a corpse. You want to scratch my back? Uh-oh. Boo-boo. This humanoid bot doesn't speak to us. If we try to talk to him... Grind. Bzz, beep. Ya wanna see my dingaling? No thanks. Looting the corpse on the ground, we find a severed head. This is what we need to pass the lock into the power plant. Remember, there was a dental scanner there, and now we have a head. A head filled with teeth. This must have been a scientist who could access that level. But why did this robot murder this person? Zero one 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 zero zero one one zero one one zero 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 one 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 zero one zero one. I tried using an online binary code converter and it just said you. I don't think it has any significance. With the head in our bag, we can use our science skill to activate a terminal against the northern wall. And there we go. The door to power opens. Against the eastern wall, we find four lockers. The first is locked, but Clarice can pick it. Inside is afterburner gum and two super stim packs. The second is locked, but Clarice can pick it. And while we're at it, we'll just go ahead and pick all of these. In the second, we find small energy cells and a variety of tools and a micro super sledge. In the third one, we find a toolkit and another big book of science. And in the last one, an extended lock picking set and two ultra stim packs. 
I tried pickpocketing each of the Vault Zero citizens for the sake of completeness, but every single one of them was empty. So heading out of this section, we can move down the hallway, and it's here I realized that I missed a room. I was preoccupied with all of the robots to the west. Inside, our perception picks up a couple of turrets and some robots. We can arrange our squad outside the door. We find the door locked, but Clarice can pick it. And when she does... Each of these turrets has over 5,050 caliber rounds. Holy crap, that's a lot of ammunition. No way I can carry that. I think I'll just leave it here for now. We see that the robots were operating on humans to the north. On one table, we find the corpse of a raider. He had a trauma kit on his body. And next to him is the corpse of a ghoul. He was carrying some muti. There are three cells blocked off by energy barriers to the east. Two of them have puddles of blood on the other side of this energy barrier. But we can't disable the barrier, so we can't get in there. Against the northern wall is another locker. Inside, a scalpel, some rataway, right away and more trauma kits. Back out to the hallway, we can take it north, then east, then north again to the intersection. We find the door to power open, as we already know. But with the head in our bag, we can talk to the dental scanner just to see what'll happen. Congratulations, brother. You have now gained access to the power plant. Advance into the power plant and locate the power nodes. You must get them online before you can enter the calculator's main lair. Thank you, General Decker. We're on it. This encounter was also intended to go a little bit differently. Instead of finding the one scientist head that we can use to access a terminal in cryogenics to open this door, we were supposed to have to hunt for the right heads. We could have found the wrong heads. And if we use the wrong heads... Dental records not recognized. Access denied. After having sifted through all sorts of heads and finding the right head, we would have heard this. Dental records confirmed. Welcome, Dr. Fergus. Access granted. At any rate, we're through. Passing through the doorway, we come under fire by robots. There are also two turrets here, but they didn't appear to fire on me. However, each of them also has over 5,000 50 caliber rounds. That's nearly 20,000 rounds from Vault Zero alone. Man, we could have used this ammo a long time ago. Using our science skill on a terminal against the eastern wall, we disable an energy barrier. I sent Oxhorn back south to see if by disabling this energy barrier, we also disabled the energy barriers outside the cells in the operating room. But we didn't, though while I was exploring, Cookie attacks another robot that walked by the door. Bringing Oxhorn back, we can move through this door into what appears to be a big room filled with toxic goo. This goo in these troughs is radioactive, and so I made sure that each of my characters had consumed enough Radex. Despite this, Clarice began to glow. However, we didn't find any radiation poisoning in her status window, so I didn't bother curing her with Radaway. After looting the wreckages, we walk around these pools of goo and follow the pathway north to try to access another door. It appears that the interior defense generators are still online. You will need to deactivate them before you can enter the inner power plant. Find these generators and take them offline, brother. Moving into this room with the two robots we just destroyed, we find two terminals, 
I went ahead and closed the door to the radioactive pool room so that no radiation could leak through. Each of these terminals looks scientific, so we can use our science skill on the first to activate it. Power appears to go out somewhere, and we can do the same on the second. Excellent work, brother. With the security generators down, you can now gain access to the power nodes. Victory is close. Almost there. Grabbing the squad, we can leave the generator room and pass down this hallway, which up until recently was blocked by an energy barrier. But we're met halfway down the hallway by a massage tank. At the end of the hall is a door to the east. Opening it. We can move south to clear the room. We open a door in the eastern wall to arrive in yet another hallway. Moving north, then east, we arrive on the northern side of another hallway and we find a lot of robots. these robots had a sunbeam gatling laser gosh these are dropping like candy now well i guess we'll give this one to clarice with her power armor she is strong enough to carry it and she has an exceptional energy weapon skill now every character i have with the exception of dylan and cookie are using gatling lasers cookie ran out of ammunition for her browning I suppose we could switch to the Gauss Gatling. After all, we are at the very end of the game, but I didn't know it was ahead of me. Maybe I wanted to save my 2mm EC for a big boss or something. So I ran her all the way back to those turrets, where we know there's a ton of 50 caliber ammunition just sitting there, and we can resupply. Sending her back to the squad, we can now focus our attention on these power plants to the east. They appear to be inactive. I guess we should turn them on, huh? To activate them, all we have to do is use our science skill on each terminal. One, moving south. We can do the same to number two. Done. Moving south, we can do the same to number three. Power has been restored to the transport system. It is time to move to the elevator and enter the calculator's main lair. With that, we earn 191,000 experience, giving practically each and every one of our characters another level. Against the eastern wall of this room is another locker. It was locked, however, and Clarice's lockpicking skill was not good enough to pick it. I never got this open, so I had to look it up. The variety of sources I read say that all we find inside is 50 caliber depleted uranium ammunition which increases armor penetration. So, looks like we need to take that elevator that was disabled at the very beginning of the mission down to the calculator's lair. We can then level all of our characters up. I dumped points into energy weapons for everyone, except Cookie. I worked on her big gun skill. We'll focus on her Gauss Gatling. And Dylan, I dumped points into his small gun skill. I want to have at least one sniper. At the end of the hall, we find boxes to the east, but there's nothing here. Then moving west, we see one room on the other side of this wall. 
we can't get through here. But crouching down, we can crawl the entire squad inside. The room itself is empty of enemies. However, we do find two lockers against the eastern wall, both of which are locked. Clarice was only able to pick one of them. Inside was a copy of Dean's Electronics, some Radex, and a scalpel. But I was never able to unlock the other one. Now, the Fallout Tactics official strategy guide says that the one on the left can't be picked. There's no amount of skill that would open this one up. With that, we wind our way out of the power plant all the way back to the elevator. After making sure we have everything we want from the inventories of Dagger Squad, we can activate the elevator terminal by the elevator shaft. This places our exit grid, and we can move all of our party members into the green square. With that, the elevator takes us down to the calculator's lair. Here we must search for and destroy the calculator, but sadly, I'm all out of time. I know I'm doing it to you again. I'm so sorry. But we'll save the ultimate battle and all possible endings to Fallout Tactics for our next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do, and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon, or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon gain access to a members-only channel on my Discord server, and YouTube members get a little badge that appears by their names in the comment sections of my videos, and access to ox emojis that they can use in the comments and during the live chats of my live streams. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.